Hello, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to today's webinar presentation. This is actually the first of two presentations that are going to happen today. The second one is scheduled to start at 1 p.m. Eastern and will be given by Dr. Baron Greather on the topic of fabrication of aligners. I am Michael Saltzman, I, and I am the Director of Digital Products at Blue Sky Bio. I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy and at home during these times. We are continuing our ongoing webinar series during this time period with the hopes that everybody could learn, use the time in this time period wisely, and that when it is time to go back to work, hopefully very soon, everybody will have additional tools in their toolbox and can implement everything that we've been discussing. Please stay up to date with our webinar schedule, blueskyplan.com forward slash webinars 2020, and on the Facebook groups, the Blue Sky Bio user group, and the Viral Dental Education Group as well. If you're watching live, then we will be sending you the CE credit for this course within uh, two weeks or so automatically to your email. So be on the lookout for that. And if you're watching the recording, then you could take the 10 question multiple choice test, send that in, and we'll be able to send you the CE credit. If you have any questions during the webinar presentation, then please enter them into the Q&A box. We will be holding the questions towards the end of the webinar presentation to be able to get through the relevant material in the designated time. Um, today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Dr. Daniel Doming, a general dentist specializing in implantology, practicing in Lafayette, Louisiana. He is a lecturer and an educator, and today he will be presenting on the topic of complete digital approach to full arch guide surgery and prosthetics. Daniel, you wanna share your screen? Yep. Good? Yep, perfect. All right, thanks for the introduction. Guys, this is, uh, this is something I've been working on for about a year and a half with Corey Glenn to try to get a uh, you know, so we, Corey and I met about two, uh, five years ago where we got into guided surgery for single tooth and multiple teeth. And then eventually that was a quick transition to full arch guided surgery that we've been lecturing on for now two years um, in various locations. We also wanted to add a component for the uh, prosthetic component as well. Um, so this is basically something that I've been working on for about a year and a half, two years that I've not lectured on as of yet. Um, and this will be on the... Um, the courses that we're going to be giving in the future. Um, this is basically all that we're going to be lectured on, how to design the guides, the provisionals, um, and the, um, the finals. So uh, a little bit about me. I, uh, after graduation from dental school in 2007, I did a three-year general practice residency at Brookdale Hospital in Brooklyn, New York, with a focus uh, on implantology, a two-year implantology residency. So I went from uh, New York City, where the individual income is around $60,000, 11 million people, to Lafayette, uh, Louisiana, where the combined average income is around $45,000, with 150,000 people. Um, I'm going to really try to rush through this PowerPoint presentation. This is not going to be a, um, um, I'm going to show you, I'll, I'm not going to explain every step by step. Um, this, this presentation is like a four to six hour lecture. I'm going to try to give you guys an overview of what's going on. Um, in my practice, try to pump out as much information as I can. So try to write in the Q&A section um, if you have any questions. The uh, biggest hurdle uh, for me in full arch implantology is uh, cost and time. Treatment plans, sweet dude, sweet. Treatment planning fixed uh, implants versus uh, designing and printing dentures. Um, also the prosthetic component of full arch Dentistry, are you going to use multi unit abutments, temporary titanium cylinders, or are you going to use peak abutments? Are you going to go direct to fixture versus um, have, having some type of prosthetic platform? Um, conversions, those are done either in the mouth or in the lab. Um, trying to reduce the chair time it takes for conversions um, and the sh taking the stress out of it. And also, after everything's done, mounting models versus digital workflow. This is, um, this is, most of my concentration right now. And obviously key implant positions helps out on all of that. So if I can spend a little bit more time on the treatment plan and the planning of these, it's gonna 
hopefully drive down my cost and reduce the, the time that I'm actually in the operatory. For an example, why do, why do I spend so much time uh, doing this? A lot of dentists will say, I don't, have the, I don't have the time and I'm not gonna use the time. This is an example of somebody that didn't use the time properly and just jumped into place implants. Um, I have not met this, this dentist. I'm not trying to throw him under the bus, but uh, from a surgical standpoint, the distal angular implants, I'm questioning why they were distal angled. If the inferior alveolar nerve is 22 millimeters away from the distal implant and there is plenty of bone width and uh, height, why wasn't an implant placed in the posterior positions 9 and 19 and 30? To me, this is just a poorly planned mandibular outcome. Unfortunately, the implants weren't placed subcrestal. So you have um, about five millimeters roughly of implants exposed. This was, these implants were placed uh, at the time when I saw her in September of last year. They were placed and restored within four months. And this is her final outcome. Um, from a prosthetic pay, uh, position, um, so the implants were placed four months ago, there's a massive ribs lap on the facial. Um, and it's open about five millimeters. You can see on the facial aspect, um, the overlap on this area, this is the, the lower. The denture, so prosthetically from the implant fixture, they placed prefabricated abutments, then made a mill bar, and then had acrylic denture sitting on top of that and without bone reduction. So there was not enough room for these prosthetics. So her denture within two months of owning it, not only getting food underneath it, but also fracturing in several places. Prosthetically, this is a absolute nightmare. And you can see from the buccal flange on the maxillary, you can see food just coming right in. And on the mandibular, this is the mandibular lower anterior on the lingual aspect. And this is the posterior aspect. You can see how far off the, um, the soft tissue is. So not planned properly, obviously. Um, and um, if he would have planned properly, he could probably place uh, maybe one less implant on the top, spaced out his lower implants, place them a little bit more subcrestal, maybe in bone reduced on the lower, maybe use some guides. Um, and prosthetically, it had been a much better, much better outcome. So uh, she took a second mortgage out, so she can't really afford anything. Um, and she's quite miserable. She was refer referred to practice. She said, I, I need to eat. I can't eat. I can't even put food in my mouth. Um, and I don't have any money. So this makes it a very, very difficult situation for her and very difficult situation for uh, any practice that wants to take on this case. Um, so for a very inexpensive cost, we removed all of the upper and the lower, and you can see the ridge lap on the lower, you can see the intaglio surface on the upper arch weren't hygienic at all. These were the abutments. So on the top, you can see they were just too long. These were, um, I think five millimeter abutments that did not need to be five millimeters. They could have easily gotten away with a 1.5 millimeter, which again, would give them a much more space, much more room. Once I took all those out and cleaned everything out, the tissue started to respond very quickly. Um, same thing on the, uh, and so what we did was we torqued in some locator attachments um, on the upper arch. I'm gonna get her into a fixed upper, uh, fixed removable upper denture. On the lower arch, pretty much the same thing. Um, Non-cleansable, um, really gross. So we're gonna place some attachments on the lower and lock in a new, uh, her denture just relined onto these attachments. And so far she's been happy with this. Obviously she want, wanted something fixed, not something fixed removable. Um, this is a work in pro progress. I didn't wanna go straight to something fixed on the lower because those implants look like they're ailing. Um, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to uh, any type of revision surgery versus removing them and placing more implants and spreading them all out and getting a better AP spread. So let's jump into the to um, some some things that uh, Corey and I've been working on. Um, you know, if you've read some of the, the case uh, reports or the uh, published literatures on advanced implant surgery, these this is a before and after of the first full arch guide case that I did um, using surgical guides versus when I used traditional methods, um, CT scans, and the before and accuracy before and after post op accuracy of implant placement. Surgical guide, bone reduction, it's phenomenal. I'm, I've been extremely happy with going guided surgery. And ever since I published um, this case in August of 2018, so I did this, you know, probably six months to a year prior, I've done nothing but guided surgery 
for full arch dentistry, implant placement, and restorative. We publish other things, especially with Aaron Gruder, who's going to be talking about some digital uh, Blue Sky Bio stuff later on today, which I highly recommend you watch his webinar. The guy's a genius. Um, this is just um, 3D printing um, dentures, getting them to fix um, with uh, trilor arch bars, and then um, using this um, is published in dental ergonomics using digital workflow for both surgical and prosthetic phase of uh, implantology. This paper published in May of last year got me into the realm of trying to provide the prosthetically driven um, implant placement, also being able to place my implants, restore them in my office. So we'll jump to the first case. Um, so this patient came in, the bridge on tooth number six was fractured to tooth number 10. This was completely mobile. Um, this was not mobile. This had been her fourth or fifth bridge that she had been uh, going around with. And um, this was a, you know, cosmetically, I don't love it. She doesn't love it, but she's dealt with it for many years. Um, this was fractured here. She's obviously had some composite bonding. Soft tissue contours are inadequate. I'm not very happy with them. Overbite issues, midline issues, um, occlusal plane issues. And if you notice, this, this bridge is only five years old, but this is her fifth one that she's ever had. And on the maxillary lingual, if you take a look, this is all metal, which means that she is overclosed. You can see chipped and porcelain on the back and extreme wear on the lower anterior teeth and her bite needs to be open. And all of this can be done in um, Blue Sky Bio software, design software to open up her bite, create a better um, bite for the patient in the, in the initial uh, provisional phase, and then transition that over into the final prosthetics. I've used this software for a long period of time. It's called Dental Flash. It was designed by Attachments International, and it, it's, it's a rudimentary you know, uh, animation to show patients this is your different treatment options. She obviously knows what she's got going on. I said, look, we can place four implants to replace this upper area. You would need implant number four, number six, seven, and 10. This is gonna be a four unit bridge with a single implant in six, single implant in site number four. We can do an upper bridge. You can keep this bridge if you want to, or option two is still place the same number of implants. She's still gonna be recrowning number five, recrowning number 11 through 14 to open up the bite. So cost wise, if I spread these implants out, I can, cost-wise get the same outcome as I would with the option one by keeping this natural bridge. So um, I advised her to electively extract tooth number 11, even though it's biomechanically it's compromised because root canal post core crown. Number five is a virgin tooth, um, but I don't, I don't want to come back and do more dentistry later on. Tooth number three and number 14 are healthy. There's nothing wrong with them. They're stable. Um, first molars, um, you know, your option, if you want to take those teeth out and place implants in those areas, I'm fine with that. Um, I just, so I chose to crown these teeth to open up the bite and maintain them. Uh, she doesn't have a high caries risk, just that she had a biomechanically unstable tooth number 11. So this was my best recommendation, um, option two here. And that's what we decided to go with. Um, if you want to watch the design for this, this is in YouTube. You can actually watch I me mean, create surgical guide and give you a walkthrough of how to design the implant placement for this area. But essentially, it's going to be implants in 4, 6, 11, and 13, um, all done guided. Um, and the, what I'd like to do is an immediate load these upper implants on the peak abutments. Prep crown here, prep crown here to open up her bite in the correct restorative plane. So... I will take intraoral scans. Um, after taking intraoral scans, I sent the upper scan off to a lab to have them open up the bite 1.5 millimeters in the posterior region and mill some bisacryl provisionals for me. I'll tell you, I'm doing all of that in my own office right now, and I'll get to that in a second. On the, um, as far as the guide design, um, you wanna make sure that um, the implants are coming out uh, on the lingual, on the anterior and the posterior through the occlusal surface. Section out those teeth before you design your guide. And I have stops for three, five, and 14, but I needed some type of anterior stop. So I kept tooth number, 11, tooth number 10 for an anterior stop. And I'll show you what that looks like here. So this is the actual guide design for this patient. I'm gonna use a pilot drill approach. You can use a fully guided full arch um, approach if you want to as well. It doesn't really matter, whatever you like to do. 
So uh, the actual day of surgery, you can see um, this, I sectioned the bridge here and extracted this tooth, removed all this, sectioned the bridge here, removed this tooth and took this bridge out. And now comes time for the um, actual implant placement and the guide to be seated. So I have an anterior stop here. This is printed with a cell Robox printer, posterior stops here, intermediate stop here, four implants going in uh, with a pilot drill guide. PRF placed around my implants, prepped three and 14, I'm gonna restore these with single tooth and splint everything across the upper arch. So uh, implants are actually placed using peak abutments uh, for the transition, packing with Teflon, reline these PMMA provisionals on top of these and the correct new, newly established vertical dimension of occlusion. And this is her bite day of surgery, all right? This is uh, the soft tissue profile um, with the milled provisionals and suture with two horizontal mattress sutures. If you've seen me or heard me lecture before, this is my ideal suture technique, building up the posterior three and 14 in the same occlusal plane as, a, uh, as the right and left side, as the newly established 1.5 millimeters of open bite. Um, after this, I double check for a ladder excursion of contacts um, make sure that she has no protrusive protrus contacts and uh, bilaterally balanced occlusion. Then also to um, fix the soft tissue um, on the maxillary arch in this phase, I'm going to try to scalp the profile from seven through ten, bring the tissues down on tooth number six, as you recall earlier. It was a defect. So this is the actual surgery. Pilot drill guides. Implants going in. You can see I have a mouth prop on the left side for my pilot drills. So I'm actually holding the guide down on the upper right side. And then I'll switch that mouth prop over to the right side and I'll hold down the opposite guide. That's when I, I do that when I'm not, not using lateral pins for fixation. immediately loaded. All right, so we go to the, this is a, a video of how I drape the PRF around the healing abutments. Just take it a little rubber dam punch or you can score the PRF and just tuck it around the healing abutments. And you can see this is a, a, a before day of surgery PRF around the healing abutments. And this is what it looks like after it's been healed for approximately three months. Soft tissue looks phenomenal with the implants placed subcrestal 1.5 millimeters. I, I like uh, a minimum of two PRF membranes around each implant. Tucking both on the facial and lingual, you need to have at least two millimeters of PRF tuck on both sides. All right, so what a lot of guys do, we'll take final impressions, send it off to the lab. The lab will give you some type of, uh, this is what we think it should look like. Um, we'll do some modifications with a bite, midline, and eventually get something like this, which I'm happy with. We can get these provisionals milled and sent to our office. This is a beautiful custom abutments and PMMA provisionals from three to 14. This is gonna get delivered in the patient's mouth. These are the custom abutments, these are the provisionals. So this is where we started. This is where we ended. Soft tissue profile looks fantastic. This is kind of an easy slam dunk for the restorative dentist to go from, you know, um, something like this with an open, now we have an open bite, better soft tissue contours in the anterior, and we can continue to uh, make this look better over time. And then she's going to go out to her referral dentist back and get restored um, with crinoid bridge upper and lower. So this is after she leaves my office, before and after Panorex. This is the day of delivery. And that's her finals. 
So something like this, you know, if, you, if you're using an outside lab, you can uh, pay somebody to do this for you. Approximately $6,000 is what I'm hearing um, you get charged. And that includes the final bridge work. It also includes the provisionals. That can be very expensive, especially if some of my friends like to use lab techs to come into their office for the, um, for the um, conversion of their provisionals. Um, you know, they use expensive implants. I'll tell you that, um, you know, designing the surgical guide myself in Blue Sky Bio, cost me about a 15 buck export fee plus $5, $5 in print. Um, dental implants, you know, for this case, would cost about $150. Uh, Blue Sky Bio is about a hundred bucks. And then um, custom abutments around 250 is what I used to pay for. So this is all old, old material, but I used to save as compared to my friends around $4,000. Um, and I spoke to Sheldon Lerner right after this case and or soon after this case. And he advised me to work on um, or to invest in uh, a true mill 250. Um, this has opened up my world um, with implant placement, restorative, and this is what I'm lecturing about today. So um, if you're not comfortable with anything I've talked about today, I've, I've used Burbank Dental Lab for a long period of time. I highly recommend them. Um, they've been uh, on the forefront of 3D printable mask and the COVID-19 outbreak. You can donate some resin to them. They can, then they'll send you a free mask and they'll use the rest of the resin to print out to donate to local hospitals. I wish everyone the best right now with the uh, COVID-19 outbreak. Please stay healthy and, and indoors. Scanning, um, I've used, we have two of these scanners in our office. We actually had the Trios, we actually have the Trios 2. We're looking to upgrade possibly to the Trios 4. Um, CAD Ray, if I recommend, you know, as a general dentist getting into this, CAD Ray supports the Meta i500. Um, we have that scanner, you know, if you're just getting into this at a, you know, $18,000 investment, as opposed to a, a $45,000, $50,000 investment, I highly recommend the Medit I-500 intraoral scanner. Obviously, I use Blue Sky Bio Plan. I've been using them for two to three years now. I highly recommend their software, especially since it's free. You just have to pay for exports. I print all with Moonray. Um, printers. I had the Moonray S. I eventually upgraded to the Moonray Pro. Um, I've, I've owned five other printers. I recommend this one the most out of all my all the printers I've ever owned. I recommend using this one. I got into uh, ExoCAD as a design software. Um, 3Shape has their own software. You know, if you want to keep everything in-house and you have a 3Shape scanner, then you, know, you might want to think about using the 3Shape design software. I went with ExoCAD. Um, it's a little bit less expensive, and um, I learned everything from Sean Vanderweide or at his website at exoacademy.com. This is what Sheldon told me to purchase. So you can um, now, I think um, this is the Aram TrueMill 250, um, supported by 3D BioCAD. You can, um, there's also IMES Core 150 that's going to come out that does something very similar, but essentially you can mill two pre mill Blue Sky Bio. Uh, pre-mills, these cost about $30 a piece. And this, you can mill a custom abutment. You can mill Emacs, you can mill Zirconia, you can mill PMMA, and you can mill wax all on one mill. Um, it's very, got a very small footprint and it's roughly $38,000, I think is the uh, MSRP price. Um, and I'll show you what I'm doing now with this mill. So let's jump right into a case. This lady came to me for a consultation visit. This is her initial smile. I'm not sure um, what happened to her, but um, failing dentition for several, several years, unhappy with her smile. Um, I don't know how she fell into money, but she fell into some money somehow and she wants all of her teeth fixed top and bottom. She wanted me to take out all of her bottom teeth and all of her top teeth, but um, honestly, all of her bottom teeth were fine periodontally. Um, biomechanically, biomechanically, she had some issues um, a while back where she had some amalgam. So she really just needs these teeth crowned um, and she needs an implant in tooth number 19 position. Her upper arch was a little bit different. Um, she had a failing um, endo on tooth number 10. Tooth number seven had a massive infection. Biomechanically, these are unstable. Um, this tooth is fractured. Um, so it need a crown. So we talked about placing implants in four, five, seven, let's see. 7, 10, 13, 14. And again, very similar to the last case scenario. This is one, two, three, four, five, six implants for the upper arch. She wanted me to crown these remaining teeth. 
versus extracting her teeth and placing six, six implants in the upper arch and a single implant down here. Cost-wise, it was gonna be the same thing. She had a lot of infection in tooth number seven, so I was a little adverse um, to place an implant in this region. Um, I would, it would have to be extract, graft, wait, wait for this area to heal, place an implant. I wouldn't be able to do an immediate load on this implant. It'd be a delayed approach, which would extend the life of, the, of this entire case. You could keep this approach if you wanted to and, and crown three, six, eight, nine, 11, 12, keep her and fixed, place implants in these regions, let her heal for a while, and then you know, eventually take these teeth out and do it, an immediate conversion, um, which is really not a bad idea. I chose to extract everything and place implants at one time. Um, she did not want to come back and place uh, more implants or have more cost involved. So she electively decided to extract tooth number three, six, eight, nine, 11, 12. Um, and I was okay with that. On the, on the lower arch, I begged her to let, keep her lower teeth and let's just crown some things and aesthetically improve what she has here. That's kind of where we went. So um, take an intraoral scan uh, in Blue Sky Bio, merge the STL of the scans with the DICOM data. You can see the infection on site number 10 and the failing endo on tooth number uh, or seven and 10. Um, I'm gonna, um, instead of placing an implant in site number seven and 10, and where she's missing bone because she had an apico here. We're going to place implants in 6 and 11, 12, 13. And obviously, she's going to need some internal sinus clips in this region here and immediate implant placement. There's not a lot of bone in tooth number 14, so I might not be able to immediate load. I'm okay going into the surgery knowing that. So work up in blue sky. I'm not going to get into this too involved. Corey kind of jumps um, hard into this to talk about uh, surgical guide design in the course that we lecture on. But this is this DICOM data stitch with the STL data. And this is the basically the workflow from stitching to uh, sectioning off teeth to surgical guide design and on the lower arch, pretty simple single tooth implant placement. 3D printed guides with um, surgical guide resin on the form um, on sprint rays. Uh, this was the pro. And I, again, I had a lab mill these provisionals. This is right whenever I got my mill. So I had a lab mill the upper and lower provisionals for me. So day of surgery, I'm going to um, take out all these teeth, uh, or actually I'm going to take out 6, 11, keep this tooth here, place implants here, place implants here, um, immediate place, take this tooth out, immediate place an implant, use this back tooth as support, keep these anterior teeth, and then eventually after I've placed all six of my implants, I'm going to take the remaining teeth out, as you see here, graft around this area because it didn't um, torque out initially very well, this implant didn't torque out very well also. And I'm immediate load actually on four implants when, and with peak abundance. This is the uh, milled provisionals from um, Barbary Dental Lab. You can see I like to add a lingual metal retention. So provisionals, they have delivery, screwed in. This was the, what the provisionals looked like right, right before delivery. So pre-op, Day of surgery. This is after several months of healing. And this is her bite. So obviously there's going to be, need to be some changes in her bite. This is her full smile. I'd like to increase the incisal display of eight and nine, fix the bite in the posterior region. Um, so I'm going to have some, make some changes. This is the day of surgery. This is what the panorex look like. Prep the lower teeth, place this implant here. This is just a before and after CT scan of the meshed together. You can just see the accuracy of the guides, even with a direct guide and then um, direct drill guide, taking the guide out and placing implants free-handed. So her, her, just go through a couple things that I think about. If she has a stable VDO, um, you can use a face bow to keep the horizontal plane in the midline in check when relining. It's extremely important when you're using, uh, if you're not using a paddle jig. With paddle jigs um, is, a mill reference point in your provisionals, and I didn't use one here, so I'm, I'm gonna use a face bow and, uh, to keep the horizontal uh, plane in check. Uh, I'm double check with bite registration pre and post op. Um, and the CEJ on the temps are um, gonna match the soft tissue contours. Um, I can see there's some questions coming in about some of these things, and I'd like to run through this PowerPoint because uh, it's already 30 minutes since the lecture, and I'm not really gotten too far into anything I really need to talk about. So we're gonna hold off questions until the end of the presentation, if that's okay. All right, um, so after she's healed, I got, still got exposed three and 14. And I'm gonna, um, this, is what, um, this is gonna be a mirror tray impression. This is just floss with some old flowable resin that's expired. I'm gonna do a pickup impression, final impression. And I'm gonna digitally 
take this into ExoCAD and with split file parameters, um, some of that, that uh, this company, um, TrueMill Abutment has done a very good job of getting their split file parameters on point whenever using different mills. This is the split file parameters for a VHF mill. But in Blue Sky, what's really nice is you can scan their, their, um, their impression posts. You don't have to scan scan bodies and you can, you can actually mill out custom abutments on the TrueMill 250 and deliver it. So this is the case that I actually did. Blue Sky Bio actually provides two different types of pre-mills for their systems. <clears throat> so this is um, the scan models in place. I'm going to go ahead and scan these with scan bodies, the soft tissue, what it looks like. This is uh, her provisionals. On the, or I actually delivered the final crown bridge here. Scan this. So this is the upper and lower scanned in place with a bite. I'm going to make some changes in ExoCAD, and um, this is going to be the milled um, custom abutments with the mill provisionals in place. And then I'm going to have her leave the office the day of delivery and make sure she's happy with this. So this is day of delivery. This is um, where she started. This is where we are currently. Um, we're going to make sure that she's happy. Her bite is perfect. And then um, I'm going to keep her in these provisionals for two to four weeks, um, get her back in, make sure she's happy with aesthetics before we mill the finals. After she's happy with the, the, the finals or the provisionals, I'm going to go ahead, uh, Burbank milled these for me. Uh, I milled this in my office. I'm going to deliver this with some screw access holes in the posterior region with permanent cement. Um, lower arch, this is the final day of delivery. So we went from here to here, upper and lower. And this is the final result that's milled in my office. Good. Um, I would say that I would, you know, if I could create, critique these, there's some things. This is the ex expanded smile. Obviously, there's some things that could be improved upon if you wanted to. This is my first ever full arch milled case that I've ever done um, in implants three to fourteen. Um, decent. So, from a cost perspective, this is the hard cost for um, you know the upper and lower uh, guided surgery. Again, you can pay an outside lab $6,000 and place their implants. I chose to mill my own surgical guides or print my own surgical guides in my office. Um, I paid for the first set of provisionals from a lab. The second set of provisionals that, that you saw that I, I tried in our mouth will cost me about $10 because I milled them on the True Mill 250, that, that machine that you saw earlier. I did everything chair side. I didn't hire a lab tech. And the custom abundance that you saw that I ordered cost me around $30 a piece. I had six of those, so it was around $180 total. So my full expense on this case from the implants, I'm excluding the natural teeth that were prepped and restored in the lower arch, cost me around $1,600, um, which is a total cost savings of $7,180. That was um, hard cost that I saved my office just by milling out myself and designing my own surgical guides. That didn't take me that long. And you can see that the outcome was decent. Um, or a general practitioner that, that does this on, uh, in between patients. Um, but this is the first case that I've ever done two years ago. And uh, since then, we've dramatically increased the aesthetics of these cases and um, also the turnaround time for something like this and continue to lower the cost. And that's what I'm gonna lecture about today. So that's, that's a full arch on uh, direct implant with custom abutments. If you're a crown and bridge guy, but if you if you like multi-unit abutments and you want to make something screw retained, is the workflow any different? And I'll tell you, it's not. So this is a full art. This this case I actually um, November maybe two years ago in 2018, I did this uh, live um, with uh, at the course that we teach at our office here in um, Lafayette, Louisiana, implants in black and white with my uh, uncle, Dr. Jerome Smith who's been a townie forever. Um, so I, I actually performed this live with the denture conversion um, and Corey took some, a lot of these surgical and prosthetic photos. Corey helped me design this guide. So this patient had a failing anchor implant in this region here. Um, we had a little bit of bone that was still stuck right here and a little bone on the, on the upper area. Um, this implant wasn't moving up and down. It was moving buccal lingual, which fractured the canine. Um, and this now is is in poor shape. We had four more, four more teeth that we decided to remove. I'm not gonna be able to get an implant back here. I'm not gonna get it. I'm, I'm not gonna attempt to put an implant right here where the buccal and lingual is super, super thin. So we're gonna place four implants. The, the, my 
really good buddy that referred this case to me um, is it owns a denture lab. So he did the denture for this case for an immediate load. And I'm gonna go ahead and place the implants and do the denture conversion. And I asked him if, I, if, if he wouldn't mind if I would do the final prosthetics because I was working on something with Corey at the time. And this is uh, what it came out to be. So these are um, Blue Sky Bio implants. Um, this was the um, advanced bone segmentation um, after um, getting enough um, prosthetic space for the uh, implant position, implant plan position, nerves, lateral pins going in between the, the implants. This was the bone reduction with the lateral pins. This is gonna get exported outside of Blue Sky Bio so I can design the surgical guide and I'll show you what it looks like in a second. So we're gonna make two guides. We're gonna make a bone reduction guide and a separable full arch guided surgery guide. So this is the second guide. So this is the bone reduction guide with lateral pin guide. And then this is gonna be the uh, full arch guided surgery with lateral pins. Again, I'm not gonna go over the design of this. Corey has an in-depth video and talks about how to do this. It's a very simple technique that we won't get in. So I printed all this on the Sprint Ray um, uh, S100. And this is what the guide looks like when it came out um, in surgical guide resin. And you can see using the full arch fully guided surgical kit, um, you can actually place the implants through the guide. And this is pretty much what I prefer to do um, right now. So the um, day of surgery, this was the pre-op um, photo. This was the anchor implant being removed and it left a tremendous defect that's gonna get grafted on the buccal and lingual. Then the guide gets placed. I'm gonna use, um, this is the lateral pin guide plus is the bone reduction guide. It's gonna act as two, two different guides. And we're gonna remove bone with the rangeurs. We're gonna remove bone with this um, surgical round burr on a straight hand piece. And then final finish with a Lindemann side cutting cross section burr um, to make sure it's it's, perfectly smooth. So what I'll tell you is that the reason why I like this guide so much is it's completely independent of the primary guide. A lot of people are really big into stackable guides. And I'll tell you if your first guide is not on point, then that'll make sure that every single sequential drill after that is going to be off. So my preference is a initial guide, remove it, place a second guide before you place your implants. Um, this patient was sedated. You can see it's a very constricted work space. Um, I don't like to place a guide and then stack upon a guide, especially if I don't have a lot of room. So this is the, the drills go through straight through the guide, the implants go through the guide, and then you can actually torque out the implants um, in the guide. And this is what I look for on all of my cases. And the main point of this photo is you can see is it's pinned laterally on the facial aspect um, through the buccal and lingual cortex. So you have bicortical stabilization of this guide. Also, the guide is supported on the facial and lingual. So you have to, you have to lingual reflect all this tissue back. The implants are stabilized through the guide. So um, if, you're, if you're drilling your guide and you, you take the guide out and you try to place it freehand, they won't, um, they won't distort from the, the planned position because they're fixated through these rings. This is the photo that I look for to take every single time I perform one of these cases. And now from here on out, all I have to do is the denture conversion, which is, should be very simple if everything's planned properly. So I've torqued out the uh, Blue Sky Bio multi-unit abutments in place, 35 Newton centimeters of force. Then I do the denture conversion, and this is a very simple conversion where I take the denture and I use fit check material on the on the intaglio surface, have the patient bite down in the correct midline all the way, and I manipulate their jaw. I'm not pressing on the posterior aspect, which will dislodge the anterior, and you can, you can confirm that your bite's gonna be off the uh, after that. It's a key point. After you pick up the fit check, you can see there's some areas where the uh, material is distorted. Those are my multi abutments, and all I have to do is very simple, mark these areas and drill these out with an acrylic burr. Place my ti temporary titanium cylinders in place. And then Corey's gonna go in the lab and ream these out for me. We're gonna do a cold cure acrylic pickup. This is the cold cure acrylic pickup. And again, have the patient bite down once again. 
make sure that the, the correct midline is perfect. So this goes to the lab at this point where it gets trimmed and the, the second molar is gonna get cut off. As a general rule, I never restore these past one tooth. So if my implant is placed in the second bicuspid region, I'm gonna keep one tooth, section off the, the second tooth. Um, I don't want long distal cantilevers on immediate loaded cases. I'm gonna add some to the intaglio, polish and smooth this. So this is what it's gonna look like on the intaglio. This is very important that you have these concave, uh, convex, not concave. Smooth, polish it to a high shine. And this is gonna be the immediate uh, provisional. While this is in the lab with my dental assistant or at the time, Corey, I'm gonna place some bone graft around these areas, place some PRF in between the implants and then suture, suture the soft tissue um, after the prosthetics are delivered. So. What I'm going to do is deliver this lower denture, and then I'm going to place my sutures on both buccal and lingual with a horizontal mattress suture. That's what it looks like day of delivery. This, patient's, this patient has a very unique situation where they don't live in town, but they're from here and they get their dentistry done in town. Um, and then he leaves for about three to six months and then comes back for about a week to check on his mother and then um, flies back and forth. So the difficulty in a, in, a, in a case like this would be to get them in, take impressions, send it off to a lab that takes three to four weeks where the patient's not gonna be back for three months. So um, in, in this type of situation, it's really ideal to have the technology in your office to be able to design, print, and mill provisionals and finals in your office for a faster turnaround time. And that's what, that's what this is gonna look like. So, um, so the surgical aspect, Prosthetic aspect, day of surgery, day of surgery, or this is actually um, after healing. You can see that we did it in March of 2018. He came back six months later in May of 2019. So now we're going to take everything out of his mouth and the soft tissue contour should look very similar to this, pink and stippled. It should... Um, I had a little bit too much pressure in this area and actually not enough pressure in this area, but the soft tissue profile looks good. I got a thick band of keratinized tissue around these implants. I'm happy. So I'm going to go ahead and start scanning. So I'm going to do a several scan step process where I scan the soft tissue on the lower arch with the multi unit abutments without scan bodies. I'm going to scan the upper denture outside the patient's mouth, the intaglio surface, as well as the occlusal surface, buccal and lingual. And then I'm going to put it back in his mouth and scan the bite. I'm gonna bring all that into ExoCAD and I'm gonna design a lower hybrid screw retained, um, take into account fixing any type of bite issues he might have, fixing the intaglio surface, uh, trimming this out, making it a little bit thinner on the lingual aspect, a little bit thinner on, on the uh, buccal aspect as well. And I'm gonna print this in MFH resin, resin. And then I'm gonna try this in the patient's mouth. This, pr pr milling this out would, you know, take a couple hours, printing it out would take about an hour. So I'm gonna quickly, while he's still in my office and after this is designed. So day one, I took impressions. Day two, I tried this in. So this gets tried in his mouth. I did a um, soft tissue uh, pickup um, with light body impression material because I could tell it was um, off the soft tissues, had him bite into this. And all I gotta do now is scan the intaglio surface, import this back into ExoCAD redesign the intaglio surface and mill it in zirconia. So that's what I did. This is the actual milled on that true mill 250 in zirconia. This was the, the size of the puck. Um, you have to let this, that puck took like two and a half hours because it was so thick. I think it was like a 30 millimeter um, zirconia puck. That took about yeah two and a half hours, something like that. You gotta let it dry for 24 hours uh, or you can let it dry for 12 hours or even put it in the oven at 300 degrees for 15 minutes to, to let the zirconia dry out before you actually sinther it. The sintering process takes, I think, 18 hours. So um, he came back in the following day. Um, whenever this, I started to stain the teeth, stain the pink tissue. This is all Mio stain and deliver. This, this is day of delivery before he left town. This was a four to five day turnaround on a full over arch. Again, this is my first multi multi abutment full arch case. So cost wise, what did this look like? Um, so this patient's actually, he left after I delivered that and um, 
for six months and I think I saw him back in November or December last year. Everything seems to be doing well. So the surgical guide cost me about $10 to print. The dental implants were Blue Sky Bio, they're about $100 a piece. These are all Biomax. Um, the multi unit abutments um, for that case, very inexpensive. No restorative parts because everything was modelless. The temp bridge was printed at MFH resin, cost me about $5. And the final bridge, bridge work, um, that big puck cost me about $325. So all in my hard cost for the, the single arch case cost me $1,140. As it compared to my friends that do this um, was usually cost about $9,200 roughly. So roughly a savings of $8,000. So all in a full arch case with four implants cost pre-mill um, abutments, Final bridge, provisional bridge, cost me $1,000 for the case using the TrueMill 250. And I'll tell you, the more you, more cases you can do like this, the cheaper that, you know, it, the, the TrueMill is paid for itself, obviously. Look at it, let's look at another case. Um, it's already been 45 minutes. I'm gonna try to zip through this case as fast as I can. Um, something very similar um, case. This is her smiling. She doesn't smile, she's actually a very attractive female, but she doesn't like to smile. So this is her trying to smile. Um, this was a retracted view of her teeth. Um, obviously failing the addition on the upper arch, she wanted to remove the upper arch um, and she has to remove the lower arch. And I told her that the lower arch is actually fine. There's nothing wrong with the lower arch except for these teeth back here. Um, so we're gonna extract this tooth. We actually talked about um, electively keeping these versus removing them. Panorex um, of her current dentition Obviously the posterior maxillary sinuses are pneumatized. They're gonna need uh, internal sinus lifts on both sides. Um, the biomechanically, she's unstable. She's got a lot of carious lesions. So we're gonna remove the upper teeth. Eight, nine, we're actually fine as, as, as well as 10, but I'm not gonna keep those teeth and um, just those three teeth. But I will keep them as a tr transition. And this is where I'm going with this. So this is again, the, the dental flash software that I use Pre-op, this was the um, caries risk control. So she needed root canals in five, six, 11, and 12 with rampant decay. This is decay issues on the lower arch as well. And we're gonna talk to her about just placing implants in the upper arch and the lower arch in site number 30 um, and possibly taking out the second molars. Um, so this is a, a software called, um, this is called Dental Flash. No, wait, this is called uh, Dentron Imaging. It's just, it's kind of a, a software just to, sh to sh help me out as opposed to planning to uh, using that uh, DSD software that's much more expensive. This is a lot cheaper version of Dentron Imaging. It's not Photoshop, so it's super, super simple to use. I use this to help me design the provisionals and help give the patients an idea of what their teeth can look like. Obviously her, her upper lip is tight. She's not smiling, smiling properly. Um, this is my key implant positions. Um, I'm not gonna be, be able to immediate load these five millimeter di uh, length implants. Um, and I'm not gonna be able to immediate load on two implants. So I'm gonna have to think of another scenario um, to design this, to, um, to immediate load this case because she can't go into a denture. That's a absolute no-no for her. So implants five millimeters before I hit the crest. These are all custom implants. And then implants in seven and 10, trying to lingual um, engage three millimeters of lingual bone in size number seven and 10. I'm gonna have to graft this buccal defect. So if you don't have ExoCAD, this is a technique that Corey invented in Mesh Mixer where you can actually select all of the teeth. If, you're, if the patient's happy with the aesthetics, you can select all the teeth, highlight the teeth and actually just create um, some provisionals, some shell temp provisionals in Mesh Mixer. Again, this would be a free, um, export, um, all you have to do is have an intraoral scan for this, smooth the borders, and you can prevent, you can uh, print these shell temps for roughly $3 on your moon, Moonray printer and MFH resin. There's a YouTube video on this. If you're not using ExoCAD and 3Shape and you wanted to create some provisional in your office, I will tell you that this is very weak material. So you're gonna have to have some type of metal lingual reinforcement to, so these provisionals don't fracture. Day of surgery, uh, or um, this is the surgical guide design. Um, this is the actual printed, printed guide. This is the uh, printed shell provisionals uh, in MF, MFH resin. Again, this cost me about $3. Day of surgery, uh, this tooth was, cost her, uh, was causing her some pain, so she had it taken out by her general dentist. So this is a very recent extraction. 
Um, we're gonna take out this tooth, um, this tooth, this tooth, keep these uh, centrals, keep this premolar, keep this canine. We're gonna um, use them initially for the uh, guided surgery. And then we're gonna place our implants, do the guide, some buckle, um, buckle bone. I'll tell you about the defect on the facial. This is uh, the Blue Sky Bios uh, guided lift kit. I realize that this is a Blue Sky Bio webinar. Um, I appreciate everything Sheldon has done for me in my practice. I do not get paid um, by Blue Sky Bio to talk about their, their implants. I don't get free implants. Um, I like what they do. I like the company. I respect everything Corey's done to help other people out. Um, and I will tell you, if you're doing full arch guided surgery, this is the easiest kit for internal sinus lifts so that you don't have to take the guide in and out the patient's mouth. If, you don't, if you're doing full arch fully guided surgery, or you want to get into full arch guided surgery, then you're going to get, you're going to buy the surgical guide. You're going to need to buy this full arch guided kit for sinus lifts. It's just a simple technique to easily bump up the, the sinus before introducing the bone into these areas and then using these condensers to pack bone. Then I will tell you, I usually place PRF first and then I place the particular granules second for my sinus bumps. But for something like this, where you have four internal sinus lifts, it can be very difficult. You don't want to take the guide in and out and actually perforate the membrane. Um, you want to make this as easy as possible. So using a full arch, fully guided kit, using a full arch, fully guided sinus lift kit as well. Um, and then you can place your implant. So that's pretty simple. Implants placed. Um, this is all going to get sutured with graph material on top. And now these uh, last teeth are going to get prepped. I'm going to reline the provisionals in my office. And then again, you can see this is some lingual meta retention, and this is the day of delivery. You can still you can see her lips are, have been retracted, um, and I'm gonna smooth and polish this at our at our follow up visit. Very simple technique. Very, you know, I got little to no cost already into this case. So this is the implants with the internal sinus lifts. You can see this is the 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 crest of the ridge, the sinus, and the bumps, um, and this is the implant place in number thirty area. After she's healed, I'm gonna expose these implants. I'm gonna wind up scanning the upper arch, um, designing a digital wax up based on the initial profile, um, scan these uh, desk scan bodies into place, or you can scan uh, whatever, whatever other scan bodies you want. I'm gonna use these uh, multi-angled uh, tie bases that are 20, 22 degrees offset. This is a full arch, uh, of actual planned PMA mill provisionals. So it's just an occlusal view, basically the same thing. Occlusal view of the provisionals with the screw access holes through the lingual. Uh, you can do this if you've um, got using guided surgery throughout the whole process. And if you're off a little bit, you can use those desk multi unit abutments to get the um, angle corrections in place and if you want to make a custom abutment you could actually do that as well for this lower arch she's actually referred to me from by a general dentist so um, what i'm going to do is extract the remaining teeth place some bone graft in those areas so i don't have salt tissue dieback convert her from a tooth born provisional to an implant born provisional these are milled on my true mill 250. this is the upper arch this is all screw retained this is before and after. From this photo, I wanted to lengthen eighth and eighth and nine. I actually lengthened a little bit too much, so I can trim this back. It's going to be an easy transition for me. This is the the implant placement, and this let's look at hard cost for something. So, she's a referral patient. She's going to go back to her dental dentist, who's um, got a very easy, you know, position now. He just have to take the provisionals, trim them up to where the patient's aesthetically happy, scan those in, and then we can mill the the final zirconia. Um, so cost wise, this is all rough cost around $8,000. If you use an outside lab and you don't want to do this yourself, but you can actually do this for around less than $2,000 in your office with the mill provisionals. Um, I'm going to show you another case real quick. we got about five minutes left. This is going to be my last case of the day. Um, so, um, let me see, actually I got, let's see. Share screen. Uh, 
let's see. Can you guys still see the PowerPoint? Yep. Yeah, it's good. Okay. I'm going to try to skip through this one um, and go to a, let's see. It's a bar over at Insure. I'm not going to be able to finish this whole PowerPoint presentation. Let, let me go. Let me go ahead and just continue with this presentation. All right. All right. I'm not going to be able to finish this PowerPoint presentation, but um, I'll let, let's look at this one real quick. Very simple um, case um, from my perspective. If the patient has a stable vertical dimension of occlusion, just has bad teeth, um, teeth need to come out. You can do root canal crown buildups on all these if you want to, but biomechanically, he's unstable on these teeth. Um, you know, buildups, root canals, crowns, going to be the same cost as taking the teeth out and placing implants. I'm going to put my money into placing the implants for this patient. So this is upper periodontally involved teeth. Um, you know, he's got some periodical abscesses and obviously not in a good position here. But if you, you can scan this in, um, use a surgical guide um, with Blue Sky Bio, design your implant placement. And um, this is basically an STL of his, his natural teeth converted over into uh, milled provisionals that can be done for $10. Um, this took me about 10 minutes. Uh, in my office to do this conversion. It doesn't take very long. Um, this is straight out of the mill. This is before I've done anything. And then you can uh, trim these up if you want to in your office. This is the, this is the surgical lateral pin guide. So for this patient, what I'm gonna do is um, I wanna extract all their teeth before placing the implants. So I'm gonna use lateral pins to get the fixation right of the surgical guide by using, using the teeth. So using the teeth on this patient, we're gonna deliver this guide, use lateral pins to get the transition right, take this out, remove the teeth, and then put the surgical guide that was designed in his mouth after the tooth are extracted and use the lateral pins to get the horizontal plane correct, the vertical dimension correct, and everything in place um, properly. So that guide cost me roughly four to five dollars to print. This guy cost me uh, four to five, maybe four dollars to print, and um, everything was exported in Blue Sky Bio, which cost me about fifteen dollars um, to export. Day of surgery. This is um, extraction of his upper teeth. This is, or this is the the uh, occlusal photo. So before I extracted everything, I placed this guide in place and used my lateral pins. Then I could take this guide out, extract his teeth, and place this guide in place and use this for full arch, fully guided protocol to place implants in the upper arch, um, bone grafting the defects all the way around. This is laterally pinned in. This is what, uh, the, I love these shots where you can see the uh, implants in uh, straight through the guide. Peak abutments in place. This is the conversion. This is the pickup chair side. And now it's gonna go to the lab and one of my dental assistants are gonna polish and smooth it. Um, I'm going to graft around these implants, place some PRF on these provisionals, remove the cover screws, screw this in place. This is the day of delivery. So I'm going to have to equilibrate his bite, make sure he's bilateral balances his uh, occlusion. This is three months of healing. This was um, what he looked like. And then the implants in place. This is pre-op. This is post-op. A surgical guide designed to the prosthetic design. This is the surgical aspect of the PRF. And then uh, this becomes very simple. You, know, you, you, you scan this in, create some provisionals. You can convert this over to your milled provisionals. And this can, this can get milled out, tried in, in your second stage provisionals and delivered into the patient's mouth. Very simple technique. All that can be done in your office um, or outsource it to a designer if you want to. So. Um, again, my cost for something like this, $20, $20 for the guide, the implant placement, restorative parts, because I use peak abutments for the pickup, transition, temporary bridge, cost me $10 to mill in my office. And this is going to be restored by a referral dentist, and it's going to cost her roughly you know, $2,500 um, to, to have it lab mill zirconia deliver the case. So even if, you, it, even if you're not milling in your office and you have the ability to design and you just don't mill, you can still dramatically reduce the cost 
by uh, designing your own guides in your office and um, and printing your own guides and outsourcing just the mill work, just as, you know, designing your, your finals. Um, I know we're at uh, 10.30. Can I uh, run through this case real quick, Mike? Yeah. Okay. Sure. So uh, I'm gonna go a little bit over time and I'm gonna get to your questions. I see I have a lot of questions. Um, this is a patient that comes in with an upper denture in place um, and he cannot afford a fixed. He can only afford an upper implant supported denture. I'll tell you, I do not make dentures over natural dentition. If, if I do, it's gonna be implant supported over denture with a bar. Bars are very expensive and it adds a lot of time and labor to the case. So I've come to start designing my own bars in my, in the, in my office, which literally takes five to 10 minutes to design your own bars. I'm gonna design, and you can see this guy has, doesn't have a lot of bone. Um, so this can be my planned implant positions for three, 13, um, 10 and seven, but these sites, I'm actually going to do an internal sinus lifts in three and 13. And this is actually four site, not three, it's four and 13. So second bicuspid uh, area. Very similar to the guide that I showed you guys earlier. It's going to be a um, guide that's going to be uh, vented, I guess you could call it, you could call it. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to have something to support that the guide to go in place because you can't just go to the mouth because he's a fully edentulous. There's no reference parts on where you're going to seat this guide. So what I did is made a traditional guide, which is kind of the old school technique. Um, I did advanced bone segmentation on the maxilla. Um, Corey has several techniques on how to do this. I'm not going to go into it. Um, you can make a guide in Blue Sky Bio software, uh, have your lateral pins as a reference point, and then make I actually kept these holes here to make sure that the alignment was correct over the crest of the ridge kind of like uh, having a window on your surgical guide. And then I exported the guide tubes um, plus the uh, implant um, rings. Um, those get exported out and um, I'm gonna create this guide in mesh mixer by meshing all this together. Um, this was the old technique that I would use for a guide like this for full arch fully guided. I'll tell you that this is my preferred uh, method. So this is the planned in um, mesh mixer guide design. This is the actual printed. So this is the old school technique. This is what I prefer to do because you can just see a lot more. Again, old school versus new school. So this is gonna sit on the maxilla. I'm gonna use these as my lateral pin stabilization. I'm gonna look through these vents, these windows to make sure that it's seated properly. Then I'm gonna remove this guide, place this guide in place, and then I'm actually gonna uh, place my implants um, through this guide. So this is day of surgery, full arch flap. This is the lateral pins in place, checking on these vents, make sure that I'm over the crest of the ridge, drill those out, take the take out the guide, and you can see how thin, you can appreciate the thinness of this guy's maxilla by looking at this. So very difficult case. One, very an extremely difficult case if you're not gonna do it guided. Um, this is the uh, only bone he had. He's been in, he's you know he's young. He's four years old. He's been in denture since he's 21 years old. Just a severe atrophic maxilla. This is a very difficult case if you want to try to do it freehand. Expect some issues. So implants placed. I'm going to go ahead and bone graft around these areas. PRF over the implants. Bone graft over the implants. He's in a denture, so I'm going to keep him in a denture. This is primary closure. I'm going to sink my implants 1.5 millimeter subcrestal. So the planned guide versus the um, actual guide, you can see before and after. And then internal sinus lifts in both locations in four and 13. This is what it looks like. Um, this is, we're gonna start off with this as maxilla and eventually work on his uh, mandible. You can see he's got um, biomechanically unstable teeth that need to be removed at some point but again, he can't afford much. So this is phase one, this will be phase two. Uh, and very easily you can um, expose his implants after he's healed for three months, take an upper final impression. You can also scan this. You can take his denture, duplicate it in acryl uh, clear acrylic, cut out those vent holes and take a full arch fixture level impression if you want to. You can also go, um, and if you do that, I recommend you splitting all these implants. You can see obviously this lower dentition is failing. Um, you can take a full arch impression like this. 
very simple technique if you want to send this to your lab. Um, at this point, I'm working on a, uh, th this is going to get completely digitally uh, revamped in my office. So the digital new school pre-surgery mastercast is just a review of what I've just talked about. Um, so again, what we showed earlier, so a scan of his upper denture outside of his mouth, complete denture, you can see, get scanned upper and lower. It's going to get mat meshed as an inversion to the upper on the palate as a reference. Um, this has to be relined to the palate. This is his bite, so it's going to get scanned. And this is his bite also with the denture outside. So now I can take this all into ExoCAD and design the post-surgical either fixed on a multi-unit abutments. Um, you can go um, direct to fixture, which is what this is going to be. It's just going to drive the cost down a little bit more. So I'm going to design a bar, um, and, and this is the the um, protocol if you're doing full arch upper and lower this is what you need to include in your scan profile so scanning the upper arch this has all been done digital and then i'm going to take this into exocad mesh everything together design the digital wax up like you see here and then i can design a bar that's going to go direct to my implant plan position <clears throat> i print these bars out and seat them on the mastercast make sure it's uh, it's completely passive and um, I usually design a denture on top of it that can seat. And the really neat part, and this is where everything's headed, is this can be printed in MFH resin and tried in to verify that it makes sure it looks perfect. This can also be milled in zirconia. If the patient likes the bar, but wants to go eventually to fixed, you don't have to remove the bar and lose your cost all into this bar. You can keep the bar in place, take out the denture that's locked in on to uh, locator attachments, and deliver this final zirconia prosthesis that's going to sit on top of this bar. And again, this is all pre-planned um, from the get-go. So this is the, the bar. You can see the taps for the multi-zest um, locator attachments. And again, what I'm a big fan of is the anterior-posterior spread. So this is the second bicuspid. This is the first molar location, first molar location. And I even have some room past that. So very pleased, this is, again, locator attachments uh, are in place. Again, you can also take these out and if he wants to go to fixed, you can mill the zirconia to seat and cement on top of this direct to fixture. So my cost for something like this, because bars will cost you an average of $1,500 for a mill bar, milled and designed bar. I'm getting a milled for me for around $350 because I'm designing myself. Um, dental implants, rough cost, around $1,500 hard cost. Um, so total cost savings around $7,000 for a case like that. And you can see more cases you do, the more uh, cost savings you have into these cases. So I'm going to end the webinar now. We're not going to be able to get to these next cases. And I'm going to take some questions from the group. Um, first question for uh, Dr. Hanna. Uh, how the lab open for bite for case without a face bow records? Good question. So um, what you do is you'll superimpose the facial um, of the patient. So you're gonna, I, I didn't go over that. I was gonna go over the, this next patient, Carl Savoy. But basically what you wanna do is you wanna scan the upper and lower um, in three shape. And you wanna take a CT scan with the patient and bite, stitch all those together, take a facial photo and match all those together. And then with that stitch profile, um, you can open the bite on an ExoCAD in, um, in the articulator. Um, uh, they have a virtual articulator. And you can open the bite one at 1.5 millimeters or two millimeters, whatever you want to do. It's very simple. Um, let's see, Paul Springs. What's up, Paul? How's it going, man? I've talked to you a couple times. Are your placements as accurate with aggressive thread implants like inner ridge when you guide your osteotomies but not placement using a handpiece? Um, Let's see. Um, I'll tell you, I, you can't get as accurate when you're not placing the implants through the guide. So using a guide, doesn't matter what implant system you're using, any ridge or blue sky bio, um, you have to use a guide for placement. That's the most accurate thing you can you can um, uh, use. Have you tried the new um, somebody's uh, Dr. Forbes? Have you tried the new? Have you used the new Prime scans? Kids considering it versus Trios and Medit. Um, if I were you, I would purchase um, the Medit just for cost reasons. Um, the only reason why I'm considering getting the uh, Trios is because um, um, I'm getting a break on cost, basically, and because they want me to use it. 
Um, the new Prime Scan I have seen, I think for the cost um, and it not being as open as the Trios or Medit, I don't think it's a game changer. How to Learn ExoCAD by Dr. Uh, Shasha. Sorry if I mispronounce anybody's name. Um, Exo Academy website, Sean Vineva, Viva, Shan, Sean Vanneviver is the master with ExoCAD. I would uh, just sign up for his website. He can teach you everything you need to know. Uh, Ford Gattens, uh, how much time are you spending on quote unquote lab work yourself, planning, design, temp, and final design? Uh, I do not check Facebook in between patients. I come in my office in between patients. If I have some downtime, I usually don't take a lunch and I'll just work on cases, work up design. Um, you know, if I have a lot of cases coming in at one time and I got to take the, you know, my laptop home with me, I'll basically, um, you know, my wife bathes my daughter at night. I don't, I'm not really, I don't do that in my family. We only have one child. So basically while she's bathing my daughter, I will work on a couple cases and whenever we're ready to go to bed to pray, then I'll um, close my laptop. But it's, it's not a big time constraint. I don't, I don't have a lot of issues with that. Can I just jump in for one second and mention LabPronto, labpronto.com. If you don't have the time or you want the assistant to do with the, with the planning or the fabrication, LabPronto is a great option. And the lab that you mentioned earlier, Burbank, is actually one of the labs that we have on LabPronto. So cases can be submitted directly to Burbank, of course. They can also be submitted via LabPronto. So I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. Um, Dustin, how are you designing the, the reduction guides? That is not a simple question, but, it, but um, it's, it's not a short answer. But you have to uh, create an advanced bone segmentation to be able to, um, for uh, bone reduction guides. And then in that, you have to measure the distance where you need for prosthetic space, you know, 15 to 18 millimeters. Um, then use that, at, use that metric to uh, plan your implants and then figure out how much bone reduction you need after that. And then after you digitally reduce the bone in uh, Blue Sky Bio Plan, you can create a guide on top of that. And um, it's, you, know, you can go to YouTube and Corey has a couple uh, YouTube videos that, you know, about 20 to 30 minutes long. It's, it's not a hard technique. It's just, it's difficult to explain um, just verbally. If you see it, it's, it's pretty easy. Are metal sleeves necessary in the guide? If you're not using a full arch fully guided, I'll say yes, um, they are necessary if you're using pilot drill guides. Um, Paul Springs again, what technique do you use to verify the scans before milling the zirconia? I always print the provisionals before milling in zirconia. I don't, I don't, um, I don't mill in zirconia until the, the provisionals are verified and perfected. Dr. J, what do you think of the material strengths between mill PMMA and print MFH? There is absolutely no comparison. Mill PMMA trumps printed MFH resin all day long. Uh, Dustin, can you explain the horizontal mattress technique on the prosthetics? Can you design on Blue Sky Bio without having to use ExoCAD? Yes, you can design in ExoCAD. You can design in Blue Sky Bio without using ExoCAD, but you can't design the finals um, in Blue Sky Bio. So the provisional phase and the um, provisional phase can be done in Blue Sky Bio. The surgical guides can be done in Blue Sky Bio but the finals cannot be done in Blue Sky Bio. And Michael, I think that's something you guys are working on currently. Yeah, our next release is gonna have the ability to export XML configuration files for the crown milling. I'd actually be happy to send you after this webinar a development build of that so you can provide your insights and your feedback to it. But that's something that you will be able to do very soon directly in Blue Sky Plan. Um, a simple question. Um, Last patient, why not restore the lower arch? Um, are they periodontally compromised? His lower arch, um, he had minor perio. I mean, as you could see with the retracted photo, he had uh, obviously gingivitis and a, you know he's AAP type two. A lot of those teeth needed endo crown buildups um, and that's not something that he can afford. Um, so we're trying to save our money. We can keep as many teeth as we can for now and eventually transition. You know, his issue is Biomechanically, he's unstable. Those teeth, once you restore them, they're not, he's, he has a carries risk control issue. He's just like sugar. Even if I try to restore those teeth, he's still not, be, not able, to keep, be able to keep them and he's only 40 something years old. So the long term, he's not probably not gonna be able to keep those teeth even, even if he puts a lot of money into them because I don't think he's gonna have, 
to have better habits um, after he puts, you know, ten thousand dollars in restoring a lot of his teeth. Um, let's see, Jay again. Why was the last surgery flapless? Um, the last surgery was not flapless. Um, when making the lateral pinholes, um, did you use any gingival grafts in those areas? If in fact flapless. So last surgery was not flapless. I don't. I don't advise flapless surgery, especially if you're getting into this. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to make surgical guides. Um, so that's that. The bar with the tubes, is that done in Blue Sky Bio? No, bars at this point cannot be done in Blue Sky Bio. That's an ExoCAD. Paul Springs, keep going, think Paul. Any experience with Blue Sky Bio Crown Bridge module? Um, I have not used that yet, but so I can't really speak to that. Matthew, do you use trilor bars from Blue Sky Bio? Yes. And if so, how long do you feel comfortable having them? I've had them in for six months, nine months sometimes. Um, uh, Brian Hampton, what do you use dental flash software to prevent options for the patient? Where do we get? Um, unfortunately, you can't download anymore. We usually give it away at our courses um, as a free software to anybody that attends. Um, anyone at Corey's courses or ones here in Lafayette. Um, is the primary purpose of the new school vented guide visibility? Is there any concern with rigidity of the guide that is designed? Yes, there's a lot of concern with the rigidity of the, the full arch fully guide. So you have to make sure you have enough lateral retention and that um, it's printed in surgical guide resin two on the form two printer, which is a stronger resin. Thanks for that question. That was really important. I forgot to talk about that. While you're answering these questions, you want to bring up your first slide again that has your course information, I think, on it so people could... Uh... Take down the information. Yeah, sure. Um, actually, I'll go. Uh, yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> Let's see. Surgical working time and provisional working time. How much time do you allot for full arch? Uh, it usually takes me about an hour to two hours. For upper and lower arch, about four hours. It's a little bit more difficult. Uh, do you control post operative positions of the implants only in the Panorex? Do you control post-op positions of the implants only with Panorex X-ray? I don't understand. Do you understand that question? Um, no. All right. Uh, okay, hi, Doc. Is it possible to make a video of the mesh mixer guide design, please? Amazing presentation. Uh, yes, and I believe there is one on YouTube. Look on Corey's channel. Uh, amazing presentation. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, Paul. Uh, Rami, uh, what is the accuracy of all your digital workflow from scanning to surgical guide design? <laughs> that is a long uh, response, but the accuracy is absolutely impressive. And I like to, I sometimes like to take post-operative panorexes uh, just to make sure that everything's healing properly. And I'll usually stitch those together just to double check. And it's actually it's super impressive, man. I'm, I'm really a big fan. What parameter, parameters and requirements should printed have an approximate cost. Um, I usually print at 100 microns um, on the pro, uh, printer pro. Um, can you use restorable, uh, restorable collagen membranes in place of PRF? I recommend PRF over. Um, if you can't get it, yes, I, I recommend a, a dense woven collagen membrane. Um, why, do you, why didn't you go on all in four than sinus lifts for one case you showed? Why do, you, why you didn't go for all on four? Oh, for angled implants. Um, for that last case, um, remember when I said he didn't have a lot of bone? He really didn't have a lot of bone in that in that area. And uh, internal sinus lifts is um, extremely easy, um, especially with that that kit that I have from Blue Sky Bio. Um, you could have done that if you wanted to, but I'll tell you, it, it was just too difficult to plan out. What cost savings equipment would you recommend for someone wanting to starting to mill in house other than the scanner? Um, IMES Core 150 or the TrueMill 250. Those are the two uh, mills I recommend right now. What is the minimum restorative pace for required for full arch provisionals made from PMMA? 15 to 18 millimeters. That's classic literature. Great presentation, by the way. When is your next uh, <laughs> pandemic course? Um, we're working on our course schedule right now with Corey and I. Um, um, so more information to come on that. We don't have anything set up. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Great presentation. Thank you. 
Um, do I use Paul? Do I use any bench top, top scanners? Yes, I have the Medit uh, T500. So thanks guys for the presentation. Or wait here for so long. I know it's late. So uh, Mike, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking the time and for giving the presentation. And I realize we have to keep it a bit short because we have another presentation coming up. So I'd like to remind everybody and encourage everybody that we have another presentation starting around an hour, 1 p.m. Eastern. Check the schedules at blueskyplan.com webinars 2020 and the Facebook groups. And the CE will be sent, again, I'm repeating, the CE will be sent in around one week, or sorry, up to two weeks via your, your email. So stay up to date with that. And Daniel, thank you. Thank you so much for your time. And for Thanks, the guys. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you.